All right, guys, on the previous video, we were looking at the cumulative compound DC motor. And that was one where we had uh, the series winding in line with our armature. And we had S1, S2, A1, A2. And then in addition to that, we had our shunt field that was connected right across the source. We put in our source polarity here. And we had this guy as F1 and this guy as F2. So in the cumulative compound DC motor, we found that these two magnetic fields were going in the same direction. And we found that by first setting it up as a series motor and seeing which direction that it spun. Then we hooked it up as a shunt motor and saw which way it spun. And if they were both spinning in the same direction, then we knew that our magnetic polarity of both the series and the shunt were set up in the same direction. So that was crucial because if we screw up the connections on the compound motor, then some funky things happen. So the differential connection is simply if you change this guy right here. So we need to have our series winding and our shunt winding having the exact same magnetic polarity. If those two magnetic fields are going in opposite directions, then one is going to cancel the other one out. And that's why the name of this connection is the differential compound DC motor. And this is not a connection that we're looking for whatsoever. We want the two magnetic fields to be additive or cumulative. We want them to combine together. You can see here that uh, the shunt, so there's our shunt winding right there, and our series winding, they're wound right on top of each other. So if those two magnetic fields are going in opposite directions, then they're going to interact and the larger magnetic field is going to take over. So what I want to do is just think for a little bit as to which one would actually take over the other one, which one would have the larger magnetic field. And in the cage match between the series and the shun field, which one would come out as the champion? And by looking at those two magnetic fields and canceling out, before I show you the video where we're in the lab, um, then you can take a look at this circuit right here and either eliminate the series or eliminate the shunt. And based off of that, you can figure out what's going to happen to the motor once I connect this up as a differential compound DC motor. Again, this is not a connection that we're looking for whatsoever. Let's go to the lab, guys. Okay, so we had the, the cumulative compound. Let's take a look at the differential compound. Differential compound means that one of the windings between the series and the shunt is going in the opposite direction. Let me show you normal operation. So this is normal operation for the cumulative compound. Cumulative meaning that the series and the shunt are both having their magnetic fields going in the same direction. But I'm going to change the polarity of the shunt. So the shunt is now going in the opposite direction of the series. Oh, like an actual flame coming off of the, the commutator. Let's see if you can see it on the screen here. Woo! Look at that flames coming out there. Thank God that's not my motor. So a differential connection means that both of those magnetic fields are going in the opposite direction. So in the cage match between the series and the shunt, which one do you think is going to win? Well, the series is going to win. The series has a lower resistance, meaning that more current is going to flow there. The shunt we found has a higher resistance. Right, so the series is going to, I hate that word now, trump the, uh, the shunt winding. And essentially what we've got is a series motor, but it's been magnetically created into a series motor. So our, um, our neutral plane has been ch changed and now the flames are just flying out of the brushes there. Okay, let's bring that back to the cumulative where S1 and F1 are the same polarity. And everything's nice. 